forever. All the present glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you like to take your seats? As time of prayer, let us direct our hearts and minds to our Lord, and as we do so, Deacon Ngyong Che will lead us. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for everything you provided until now. We thank you for your grace that made us your precious children. We also confess our sins and weakness before you and ask for your forgiveness. We trust your abundant mercy and faithfulness in spite of our repeated sins. You always feed us in body and spirit and keep us safe like our shepherd. So we want our lives to be with you at all times and to worship you every moment. Lord, we pray for our country. Please keep our country safe from war and allow us your grace to be a country with no violence, no poverty, and no injustice. Lord, we also pray for our church. Please bless our church and help our pastors so that they are capable enough of carrying out your work. We are in the middle of September special early morning prayer rally. Please allow this congregation to be full of your grace and you be honored. We hope as many people as possible gather, pray, be graced, and decide to take their mission during this rally. Lord, please bless English Worship AM Ministry and Pastor Paul Han. May your amazing grace be on him and his family so that he can lead AM Ministry well. We hope all people here be graced through your words and praise, and you be honored. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 to 30. It's Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 to 30. Deacon Chan-Ming Kim and Una Jung will read this scriptural passage for us. Whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you, this is a sign to them that they will be destroyed but that you will be saved and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. Since, Since you, you are going, going through, through the, the same, same struggle, struggle you saw so I had, and, and now hear that, that I, I still, still have. have. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the reading of God's word. A very warm welcome to everybody who's joined here to worship together. If you're new here today, it's our prayer that you may come to know Jesus Christ for who he is and how good he is for you. Now, this special September early morning prayer meeting continues from this Tuesday. So come pray, receive grace, and respond to calling. Now, as you may have noticed, uh, as you come in, there was a packet of cards with Bible verses on it. So if you haven't collected yours yet, get one on your way out and do memorize and engrave them on your heart. 
because we will have an autumn Bible verse memory challenge in October or November. There's an important announcement. The renovation work for this building, World Gloria Center, starts from 22nd September. That's Friday. So two more Sundays here, and there will be meeting in another place. And the, the renovation work will last for at least eight months. We don't know exactly how long. Um, so please remember that in your prayers so that all the work will go smoothly and that we'll meet in new place with new grace. Uh, it's sad to announce that Konsani Ransuk Chang has been diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, 20 years ago, she had cancer, and, but she beat it. It's our prayer that she will beat it again. So may God give her strength, faith, peace, and healing. So please remember her as you pray for the members of our ministry. Now, we have a special guest today. Um, esteemed guest from all the way from Kenya, uh, Reverend Simon Kuta and his esteemed colleagues will offer a special song first, and then Reverend uh, Kuta will share the current state of Kenya and share the prayer points so that we can pray for the country. So it's your turn. Ameni tende, ameni tende, ameni tende, ameni tende, Emanueli, ameni tende, oh Emanueli, ameni tende, ye ye nimfalme, ye ye nimfalme. Emanueli, ye ye nimfalme, oh Emanueli, ye ye nimfal, ye ye meniokoa, ameniyoko, ameniyokoa, ameniyokoa, Emanueli, ameniyokoa, oh Emanueli, ameniyokoa, ameni tende. Ameni tendea, ameni tendea, ameni tendea, Emanueli, ameni tendea, oh Emanueli, ameni tendea. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Thank you. We are from Kenya. We come from different churches in Kenya. We fellowship in different churches. And we come from a county called Baringo County, where we have adopted our sister, Okshil. She's part of us. And we have come all the way to worship with you here. And we've come for the morning prayers. We would like to sing one song in Kiswahili. And it means, my hope is built on nothing else by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Jaku to my nisina, ila damu ya kebwana, sina wema wakutosha, zambi sangu kusiosha, kwa ke yesu nasimama, Ndiye mwamba ni salama, ndiye mwamba ni salama, Ndiye mwamba ni salama, njia yangu iwe ndefu, yeye hunipa wakofu, mawimbi ya kinipika, ngufu za kendi sonanga, kwa ke yesu nasimama. Ndiye mwamba ni salama, ndiye mwamba ni salama. Ndiye mwamba ni salama, damu ya kena sadaka, na teke mea daima, yote chini ya kisha, mokosi ya tanitosha, kwa ke yesu nasimama. Ndiye mwamba ni salama, ndiye mwamba ni salama. Ndiye mwamba ni salama, nikiitwa ukumuni, 
Rohoni ni na amani ni kifi kwa haki yake sina hofu mbele zake kwake Yesu nasimama ndiye mwamba ni salama ndiye mwamba ni salama ndiye mwamba ni salama kwake Yesu nasimama Ndiye mwamba ni salama ndiye mwamba ni salama ndiye mwamba ni salama Praise God church Amen Praise God my name is Amos Tepto. I worship in Baptist Church in Kenya, and I work for the Minister of Finance, the National Treasury. Thank you very much. Okay, my name is uh, Dr. Amy Chesire. I'm the first lady of a county called Baringo County, and I'm a public health specialist. I love the Lord as my personal savior, and I fellowship in Nairobi Baptist Church when I'm in Nairobi and in AIC Cabernet when I'm at the county, and also another AIC church when I'm in my home. Praise God. Praise God, church. I'm Caroline Chebon. I'm chief nurse. I worship at AIC Solian in Eldama Ravine, Baringo. Thank you. Praise God. My name is Jacob Chipcoin. I'm saved. I work in Baringo County government as the county secretary and the head of public service. I fellowship in African Inland Church at home called Seretunin. God bless. Iendembele injilio, iendembele, iendembele injilia yesu iendembele. Ndiyo mana tunasema iendembele. Ndiyo mana inasema iendembe, iendembele, injilio, iendembele. Praise be to God, church. I, I thank God uh, for this invitation to be here this morning. Uh, as you have heard, I'm Reverend Simon Kuta uh, from Kenya and particularly from Baringo County. I'm the Minister of uh, Education, Vocational Training and Library Services in my county. And I'm married uh, with five children. I'm an African. And we really give, I really give glory to God for your warm welcome. Pastor, your people are so warm. You are so kind. And uh, we received invitation uh, from this great church to come and part, be part of the uh, morning prayer rally uh, uh, meeting for nine days. And uh, we really appreciate your facilitation. You invited us, facilitated us. And since we arrived here, we've been treated as kings and queens. And we really count it a privilege. I don't think there's any other time that we'll be given such treatment. And we really appreciate uh, you. As you have heard, we are from Kenya. Kenya is a beautiful country headed by a Christian president who happened to have fellowship in your church one time with his wife, uh, Rachel. And uh, even our deputy president is also a Christian and is married to a pastor. And it is a new dispensation in Kenya that God has given us Christian leaders. And our prayer to you, we beseech you as the church here um, that uh, you join us in prayer to pray for the new president because our country is undergoing various challenges. It's a beautiful country, yes, but with so many social economic ch uh, challenges. And the goal of our president uh, as he was sworn into office is to bring up the lives of the lowly in the society and bring up and revive our economy. So that is one prayer item that we would want you to pray for us. And uh, you have heard that we are from Kenya, and we are from a county called Baringo. Uh, Kenya has 47 counties, 
headed by governors. And our governor is ably represented by his beloved wife, uh, Dr. Amy Chesire here. And our governor is also a Christian. And his wife is a Christian. And uh, if there's something that uh, is a burden in the heart of our governor, is about the education of early uh, young children. In Baringo County, we have a total of 51,000 uh, small children. We call it early uh, education development. And one of the challenges that we are facing as a county, which we really beseech you to pray with us, is that uh, these children, most of them are from very marginalized groups, unreached groups, with, they are unreached with the word, and also unreached with, edu with education. And one of the big challenges is that when they come to school, they need to be fed. They come from homes where there's no food, at times, come to school, when there's no food, then they drop out from school. And you all know that education is a game changer. So education and the word of God is a game changer. So pray for us to God, who is a God of impossibilities, that uh, these 51,000 children, God will open a way that they will be having meals uh, every time they come to school. Uh, we love you all. And uh, as I leave you with this verse in Romans 13, verse 8, that says, as believers, let's have no other debt. Let Make sure that if it's bank debt, pay it off. If it's someone's debt, pay it off. But there's this one debt that you sh we should never pay. That is the love of God for one another. So we owe you the love of God, and you owe us the love of God. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord uplift you. God bless you so much. Thank you, Pastor Kyoto, for wonderful, wonderful songs and your bit of testimony and sharing prayer points. Um, well, obviously, this is English-speaking service, but, you know, for us to pray more effectively, more efficiently, I need to say, share this a little bit of this in Korean. So please, please um, excuse me. 예, 잠깐 한국말로 소개시키게 되면요. 우리 본 바딩고 도 도지사 부인하고 또 교육부 장관하고 그어 비서 하시는 분들 오신 겁니다. 교육 지금 교육부 장관님 하신 거는 지금 대통령이 믿는 사람인데 케냐의 경제와 이제 교육을 위해 고민하고 있는데 아이들이 대부분 못 살기 때문에 학교에 와서 밥을 먹을 수 있어야 교육을 받는다 그래요. 학교에서 밥을 못 먹으면 이제 자퇴를 하고 그래서 그걸 위해서 기도해 주시기를 so we'll remember that. We will remember you in our prayers and continue to pray. So may God work wonderfully in your service for your country. So now it's time for choral praise. Our very own Sushana Choir will offer a song entitled, We Are More Than Conquerors.
Praise the Lord. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, today I want to talk to you about the gospel and its implications. I'm awestruck by the gospel over the last week because the senior pastor emeritus was preaching on the gospel and our guests were singing about Jesus and his blood and I was led to meditate on the gospel as well. So today I want to talk to you about the gospel and its implications. So in Philippians 1, Paul the Apostle, towards the end of the chapter 1, encourages, commands the Philippians to conduct themselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Now the expression, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy, is just one word in the original Greek text. And that word means to live, to live as a citizen. Now, Philippi was a colony of Rome. I mean, we have touched upon this not long ago, so you should know this. It was the leading city in the province of Macedonia. And they, you know, they had many privileges. They were exempt from tax and everything. And many of them had Roman citizenship. The Philippian Christians obviously were very proud to be part of the city. And they were also citizens, but they were also citizens of a much more important kingdom, the kingdom of God. Now, if the Philippines had reason to be proud of their earthly city, they had much better reason to be proud of the heavenly city. And the heavenly citizenship is to be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So what is the gospel of Christ? To use John 3:16, the famous verse, God loved the world so much that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for the sins of the humanity and to rise from the dead on the third day. And everyone, anyone who believes in him will have eternal life with God and shall not perish. Amen. Now, if you want a shorter version of that, the gospel is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you want even shorter version of it, the gospel is Jesus Christ. Now, what does it mean to live in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ then? Let's look at three points that comes from the gospel. Number one, God sent Jesus. Now, imagine you're in trouble, and you're in, in a really, really huge trouble, and you call 911 or 119 or 999, whichever country happen, you happen to be, and you say, I'm in a big trouble, please help. And how would you feel if the operator told you, okay, we're sending you Spider-Man. Would you let out a sigh of relief? Thank God, Spider-Man is coming. How about this? How would you feel if the operator told you, okay, we're sending you a demon. What? Are you kidding me? It's not funny. It's horrible. It's terrible. But that's what people actually do when they consult mediums or fortune tellers. They invite evil spirits to come and help them. But help never comes. And their life becomes more miserable. On the other hand, what if you heard him or her say, Okay, we are sending you Jesus. We're sending you Jesus. Well, that settles it, doesn't it? Problem solved, nothing to worry about. But the thing is, we didn't ask God to send anyone in the first place. In fact, we didn't even know God. It was His decision to send His Son. It was His initiative to save the humankind that was lost. So Romans 1-2 says this, The gospel He promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. In the Holy Scriptures, in the Old Testament, so at least four or five hundred years before the coming of Christ. So in 1 Peter 1, 10 to 12, I know it's a long verse, but it's a kind of a um, bit of mouthful and difficult, so shall we read this together? Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, 
trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Amen. God sent Jesus on a mission. Jesus came to rescue us from something we could do nothing about. His heart was fully on this mission. He was so serious about this that he gave his own life. Even angels long to look into these things. Why? Because they're so bored in heaven? No, because it's so extraordinary, so awe-inspiring, and so magnificent. Now, Jesus was sent to be with us. He came to us. He is God with us. 1 Thessalonians 5.10 says, He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. When Jesus comes, there is relief, joy, peace, awe, and wonder. Think about it. The Almighty God coming down for you. In this respect, to live in a manner worthy of the gospel would mean to live in peace, joy, and assurance. The Philippian Christians had reasons to be afraid. They, they, they were a minority group, and there were people opposing them. But Paul tells them not to be afraid. Humanly speaking, their prospect wasn't good. It wasn't looking good at all. In an empire where all kinds of idol worship were promoted and encouraged, they were the old ones out. And they became a target for abuse and attack. But to live in a manner worthy of the gospel means that they live in peace and confidence, not in fear. Their presence, that, that their peace is a sign that their opponents will be destroyed and that they will be saved by God. Are you afraid of someone? Do you fear something? Remember, Jesus was sent for you. He came for you. He is your Savior. And secondly, Jesus died on the cross. The cross was the ultimate place of judgment. On the outside, it looked as if Jesus was defeated. But in fact, he was victorious. He defeated the power of sin and death on the cross. On the cross, God judges, forgives, and cleanses. In Christ, there is restoration, liberation, and joy. So to live in a manner worthy of the gospel means that you remember that your sins are forgiven, that you are cleansed, and that you are no longer slaves to sin. Your sins are forgiven. No matter what you have done, there is nothing God cannot forgive by the blood of Jesus. Regardless of how you feel, the truth is that if you believe in Jesus died for you, you stand forgiven. Don't let any other voices haunt you. Speak the truth, and the truth will set you free. Likewise, you are cleansed in Jesus. You are clean in Jesus. Don't let your sense of shame and unworthiness cloud out that truth. You may have done some horrible things in the past, but God knows that already and still loves you and accepts you in Jesus. Now, because the power of sin and death is defeated on the cross, you are no longer slaves to sin. Yes, the Christian life is not a playground, it's a battleground. Although the enemy is defeated, he's not done yet. We are still in the process of mop-up operations after the critical victory of Jesus Christ. This means that we will make mistakes and get involved in sinful acts. 
but we should focus on the sacrifice of Jesus rather than focus on our weaknesses. We fall short all the time, but we live by grace. We stand only by the blood of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1, 29 says that we are not only to believe on Jesus, but also to suffer for Him. Now, many people will not like this idea. I mean, they come to Jesus to be rescued from suffering, not to take on another suffering, right? Yet we are who we are because of the sacrifices many people have borne for us. Our parents, teachers, brothers and sisters, and many others. Whether we like it or not, we are already suffering for someone else. We sacrifice our time, our money, our energy, and freedom to serve others. Okay, maybe not everyone is doing that, but we bear some burden for other people. I have a confession to make. Every week I am faced with a temptation that is a temptation to speak what people want to hear rather than what God wants us to hear. Obviously, I'm not an entertainer and will never be able to please everybody. However, if someone is hurt or hurt by or unhappy about what I believe to be biblically true, I would strongly encourage that person to study the Bible carefully to see if what they hear is actually true. Now, if God's Word doesn't make us uncomfortable from time to time, we should question it. If everything God says to us is to our liking, then this Bible would be a purely human product and worth nothing. The death of Jesus Christ is, is a serious stuff. His suffering and death are not little accessories to be tacked on at the end. The call to take our own crosses and follow Jesus is not to be ignored or treated lightly. We should become wary of teachings that make Jesus remain only as a helper and comforter while we sit in the driving seat. If all the help we need from Jesus is for a bigger apartment, for a better car, or for a better life now, and then go to heaven when we die, then Jesus didn't have to die on the cross. He could simply give such things to us. Think about why Jesus had to die on the cross. It's primarily about what we become, not what we will have, or the will have wonderful blessings. It's about becoming like Jesus, becoming mature like Jesus. Somebody said, I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand with the world and be judged by God. And finally, Jesus rose again. Hallelujah. Not only did Jesus die on the cross, He rose again from the grave. His resurrection justifies everything He said before His death on the cross. His resurrection completes His act of salvation. Because He rose again, we have hope of eternal life. Because He is alive, we can be confident. Because He has given us new life, our future is bright and bright indeed. Down the centuries, many Christians were people who could be considered hopeless according to the world's standard. But can anyone be considered hopeful when this life on earth is all there is? Everything on earth will come to an end. Even this planet earth will come to an end. Without God, everyone is hopeless, no matter what kind of life they're living right now. The Philippians were opposed, and the opposition can come in a variety of forms. It can come in subtle forms like sneering and jokes, or it can come in the obvious forms of violence. We live in a society where the opposition comes 
more in the subtler forms. Your family or friends might joke about your faith. They may sneer at you. But there is another form of opposition in a country like South Korea. In this affluent society, the opposition can come in the form of temptations. We can be faced with values or principles which look good on the outside, but are actually opposed to God. If we believe in Jesus, we should know that what we have in Christ is far, far superior and far better than what this world offers. So don't kneel before the world, but bow only to God. Ephesians 3.6 says this. Shall we read this together? This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. Now, how would you feel if Bill Gates accepted you as his heir? Not bad, yeah? He's the sixth richest person in the world, and his net worth is 114 billion US dollars. Now, how much is this earth worth? How much money would you need to buy this planet? Yet this planet is but a tiny speck in the vast universe. God is the creator of this universe. Even our solar system is not worth much when we consider the size of this universe. That creator God has called you. He has called you to be his child and his heir. It's simply mind-boggling. It goes way beyond our wildest imaginations. So you can stand on your feet straight. You can be confident. You are incomparably rich in Jesus. No unbeliever, however rich, can be compared to you. Remember that. The gospel is so precious, yet it is freely available. But the cost was infinite because the Son of God died to make that possible. Think about the gospel. Think about what you have in Christ. Think about its implications. If the world pulls you away from the gospel and tempts you to live by its, by its rules, mind the gap. Mind the gap it creates between you and your God. Brothers and sisters, have you heard the gospel and accepted Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Then listen to what God says to us today. Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we stand here awestruck. Your grace and love goes way beyond our imaginations and desires and hopes. You have given us yourself to us. You have sent Jesus to us. You have allowed him to die for us on the cross. And you have risen him from the grave for us. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the eternal life you have given us. Thank you for the inheritance you have promised in Christ Jesus. Lord, help us to remember that and live by that and stand firm on that truth. Whatever comes, help us not to be afraid of anything, but to trust your promises, to walk with your spirit and hope, put our trust and hope in you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh
Let us pray over this offering. Lord, we come before you with grateful hearts. We thank you for who you are and for all you have done for us. We offer ourselves as we offer these gifts. Bless us and use us to build up the body of Christ. You are worthy of all praise. We give you glory and honor. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining us to worship together. It's wonderful to have you. We are blessed to have you as we glorify our Lord. Now, we have newcomers and visitors today. Well, first of all, as you have noticed and seen, our distinguished, esteemed guests, brothers and sisters, all the way from Kenya, we really appreciate your praise and your prayer requests. We'll definitely remember you in our prayers. So let's bless them. God bless you. God bless you and your country. Okay, and we have newcomers, uh, Deacon Kang Sung Hoon, Im Jae Eun, and Park Jun Ho. Would you please stand wherever you are? Yes, there, there they are at the back. Okay, God bless you. Thank you for coming and joining us. Thank you. Yes, as always, we are very grateful to our Taylor Praise Team for their service, wonderful song, and for, what, to our Shoshana Choir for this faithful service. Let's bless them and give thanks to our Lord for them. And also to those who prayed and read scripture and those who are serving at the back as well. Let's bless them. Okay, now let us all stand together. And greet one another by saying, Jesus came for you. Jesus died for you. Jesus rose again for you. That's the gospel for you. Our final song is Days of Elijah. Let's sing together.
Let us pray together. May the abounding grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the immeasurable love of God our Father, and the loving fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with everyone here, their families, Myeongseong Church, and our nations, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.